simple way to prove that wrong is put uh, very simple way to prove yeah. it right that <laughs> a very drop, simple drop a heavy object yeah. and a light object you will see heavy object will touch the ground fast but that's Wait, because no, of a very, resistance no, but, uh, but put the simple, paper on no, top of the books just, just, and just, then just. let them go okay can you can you guys even understand physics can you guys <laughs> shut physics up. graduate student. can you guys oh, shut oh, up a very simple way can you can you guys be sus a very simple P equals W? What does that mean? This is no ordinary tree. This is an Aristotle tree. This is no ordinary tree. It's Aristotle's tree. Let's begin our Aristotle story by a question. Who did Athenians in 450 BC fear the most? And my answer is Sparta. Yes, nobody liked to fight in the Peloponnesian War. For some Athenians, talking to Socrates was much more challenging than fighting against Sparta. And Socrates had a great student, Plato. And Plato's greatest student was Aristotle. He was born in 384 BC. He lived about 62 years. In the world of 350 BC, Aristotle was the only human being to translate his ideas into equations. The equations was that heavier objects fall faster than light objects. We can prove that, right? Should we accept or reject Aristotelian hypothesis? Aristotle was correct. Heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects. No, lighter objects appear to fall slower due to air resistance. Joe, don't tell. All right, game on. If I take two pieces of paper and just let them fall, then air resistance will affect them and they will both fall slower. But if I crumple one up so that there's less air below it, and thus that means that it will fall faster, then uh, even though they have the same mass, they have the same weight, one will have a greater velocity, which means velocity and weight are not correlated. Of course, you see that heavy object has the ground faster than the light object. Now, what if I drop them like this, right? Drop them. What happens? This a heavy object creates a vacuum, creates a moon along the path, along the path of this light object. Drop the two of them here and the moon. Hopefully, they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? As you saw that it does work on the moon. B is equal to 1 over rho? What does that mean? Now we're going to take you to Aristotle's second hypothesis. B equals 1 over rho. And water has more density than air. If Aristotle is right, then this one will touch the ground faster than this one because this is more dense because this is water. Ready, set, go. My man Aristotle was correct. No, he wasn't. Even though his math seemingly works on Earth, let me show you an example outside of Earth. Do okay, you... sure. All right, do you see the moon? Okay, the moon. What about the moon? Well, the moon has no atmosphere, right? Okay, sure. So if it has no atmosphere, that means zero density. But who cares about density? Well, Aristotle does, because near zero density means that the moon should be going at nearly infinite speed. Why? Uh, because you said velocity is propo uh, inversely proportional to density. So as density oh. decreases, velocity should increase massively. But that's not the case. Velocity is proportional to 1 over 0. So velocity is infinity because 1 over 0 is infinity. Now, if density is 0, then velocity is infinity, right? Einstein said that uh, nothing can move faster than the speed of light, 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second, which he called c. But infinity is bigger than c, right? So that contradicts Einstein laws. So we must reject Aristotle hypothesis. Okay, well, I feel bad for my man Aristotle. Don't feel bad. He's already dead. The vacuum for the paper, but there wasn't any vacuum for the book. Who created this vacuum for the paper? The, the books. books. Let's watch it again. There you go. Thank you, Harvard student. Aristotle gave us how many big ideas? Four. Number one. Uh, geocentrism, the idea, yeah, the yeah. idea that the entire universe around, uh, orbited around the Earth. So art, well, art is the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Who debunked this idea? Uh, Copernicus, Kepler, and uh, Galileo, what although other big figures played a part in it as well. So we no longer believe in geocentrism. Is it heliocentrism right now? Is yeah, it's actually, a heliocentrism. I think we no longer believe in heliocentrism. Well, either. sort of. But, uh, we don't believe in Copernicus's heliocentrism anymore. 
the idea that the sun is the center of the universe. Oh, I see. We now believe the more moderate idea that the sun is the center of the solar system. Mm. Yeah. Okay, all right. So there is actually no center of the universe. And you can uh, you can also think you are the center of the universe. You can always find the center of the galaxy, the center of the cluster, the center of the set of clusters, right, right. but you can mm -hmm. never find the center of the entire universe. Yes. This uh, Aristotle's second big idea was? Was that the velocity of an object is proportional to its weight. What's wrong with that idea? Well, that's wrong because he famously said, he okay. famously said, have you observed for Washington? The acceleration is right. I, I, and, I did it 50 times and yeah. it was right all the time. I well, did. very simple way to prove that wrong is put... Very uh, simple way to prove yeah. it right that... <laughs> A very drop, simple drop a heavy object uh -huh. and a light object will see heavy object will touch the ground fast. But that's Wait, because no, of a very resistance. But, no, uh, but put a very the simple, paper on no, top of the book just, just, and just, then just. let them go. Okay, can you can you even understand physics? Can you guys shut up? Physics graduate student. Can you guys shut up? A very simple way. Can you can you guys please shut up? A very simple way to prove this wrong is to not use paper which has so much surface area. It could be used to cast air resistance. Oh, you can't pull the paper? No, instead use something that's heavier than paper. And then use something even heavier than the other mass. Like use a one kilogram mass and a five kilogram mass. You see, they both follow the same rate. So his, okay. his second big idea was that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was his third big idea? His third big idea was that the velocity of a falling object was exactly inversely proportional to the density of the medium. I don't see any falling. problem with that because when, for example, I put some water in the cylinder, what happened? Yeah, it does And fall I put some water. air in the cylinder and I drop two metal objects and I see that the cylinder that contains the water, the metal ball takes forever. So Aristotle is right again, my guy, Aristotle is right yeah, again. Yeah, but air is about one gram per cubic and meter. It also Wait, violates... no, no, one second. Air is about one gram per cubic meter. Water is about one kilogram per cubic meter. So are you telling me that an object falls a one one thousandth Lower, but of course there could have been a proportionality constant so let's fully prove it wrong let's say we go to the moon on the moon there's basically no air density and in fact we've actually conducted this experiment the moon has Apollo 15 Scott Thomas no David Scott David Scott David Scott 1971, 1971. Apollo 15 yes yeah so Skinny. yeah all right okay the yeah. next big idea so his the third idea did not Wait, survive uh, no. you didn't even let me explain why oh okay so the moon has basically no air density, meaning that the density of the medium should be around zero, and it should approach practically infinity. So but of course that doesn't infinity. happen. If you compare the clip of dropping a ball on the moon and dropping a ball on the earth, you'll find that the one on the moon even travels slower than it it's does because on it's just 1.6 meters per second square. Mm -hmm. Quick. So Aris, my guy is was wrong again. Yeah, third time is the charm. But for him, it's four times. I um, did he have? Uh, did, he give us, did he give us any, any more? Any yeah. more big idea? One more idea: the oh, idea yeah, of heavenly body. There are differences between uh, earthly body like mm -hmm. Apple and heavenly body like the moon. What's wrong with that? I mean, there well, is no difference. Uh, when both. I look at the night sky, I see moon. Mm -hmm. I see heaven. Uh, yeah, well, but how is that different from? Ordinary it body. looks nicer. See, it's not a yeah. trivial. How many people? Ta ta I mean, I look nicer than you. Does that mean that we're composed of <laughs> fundamentally different matter? Uh, <laughs> but uh, Sir Isaac, it took a Sir Isaac Newton to mathematically. Did you just prove... call me Sir Isaac? No, I said it took a Sir Isaac Newton. When he said Sir Isaac Newton, he did not refer it to you. No, but yeah. he yeah. referred Sir it to the guy who was born on Christmas Day, sixteen forty-two. It was actually not Christmas Day. It was. Okay, there are, you see, the skeptical people will say what the skeptical people think. They we also, use it for they, also, they also think that Leibniz invented calculus and the sky is purple. So you think that it's July right now? No. No. Sir Isaac it's... Newton was born on Christmas Day, sure, period. So you think it's, because you, th how so you did he, how did he debunk it? No, wait. No, we are so, changing the So subject. you think okay. it's July 2020? Doesn't matter right when now. he was born. Okay. He was born on Christmas Day. He was okay. born in 1643 on January okay. 7th. Okay, okay. So it uh, in 1666, Sir Isaac Newton invented the universal law of gravitation, and he showed that an apple falls for the same reason that the moon falls, namely gravity. Gravity is the same force that pulls the apple down from the tree, and it's the same force that provides the centripetal acceleration for the moon so to go around So what did Aristotle mean when he said that the heavenly bodies were different from the earth. Well, it's a very natural assumption to think that things that are outside. You know of how the many earth people even today different. think that moon is heavenly body. 
And they, no, but obviously we refer to anything in the night sky as a heavenly body even today. Yeah. But what did he mean when he said they were fundamentally? Ask Neil Armstrong when he stepped on the moon. No, what, what did definitely he, they don't look like heavenly. No, what did he, <laughs> what did he mean by heavenly bodies well, are different? Well, maybe he thought they were made of different elements. Remember Aristotle? Or maybe the God, God, God resides there. That's what he probably think. Yeah, heavenly means you know each of them, yeah. each of them. Yeah, like we don't know. Turns out God. Does maybe not he didn't even them. know what he was. But definitely, yeah, moon is not. Moon looks good from distance. Yeah. But it's... I, but not from far, close. Not from close. Yeah, it does. Well, well, it looks yeah, beautiful from close. But what For me, saying, dust is also beautiful because... Yeah. Oh, there, it's actually called lunar regolith. And we have the samples... But we are changing the, the subject. The okay, so... Actually, do, moon dust is extremely toxic. Do you it's still... very fine. How much... So it can get into the compartments of your lungs. So according to... Know. So according to you, who is the father of uh, physics, uh, Aristotle, Sir Isaac Newton, or Albert Einstein? I think, I mean, the father doesn't necessarily have to be a person who raises uh, the son well. So I think that it should be Aristotle. <laughs> I think yeah. it should be Einstein. I think it's uh, Sir Isaac Newton, my man. Einstein? Yeah, Sir Einstein. Einstein? Yeah. So physics didn't exist before Einstein? I don't think so, did it? Okay, it's a joke, it's a joke. He's like child, he cannot take joke. 